Y'all better not make me get up off this couch. All right, let's do this. Hello, everybody. My name is Brianna, and welcome back to Carefree Bree. So glad you could join me. If you are new, welcome. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Um, if you're returning, nice to have you back. Let's just go ahead and jump right on in. But first, you know I gotta have some. I don't know why I put a cold brew in a mug. I don't know why. It's sleepy time tea because I've got a lot of energy flowing right now. I need to calm the hell down. So Thursday, um, again, some of the same old. I started out just not feeling well at all. I was not feeling good. That's a trend with my body, just not feeling good. So I decided to take care of myself that day and just work from home. I said, you know what? I'm just not gonna do today. I'm not going outside. I'm not doing any of this. My body feels awful. Obviously, she doesn't wanna get up from this bed and I fear if I actually do get up, then she's gonna punish me somehow. So I worked from home. So that was an L, it was also a W because I decided to take initiative and look out for me. Friday, unfortunately, more of the same. Only this time I couldn't work from home at all. I had to just straight up not work at all. My flare ups were like super crazy. The kind of stuff that keeps you up in the middle of the night. So I decided to just take the day off, but I still had to go to my appointments and stuff. Um, so I still had to end up trekking myself downtown on this super, you know, long, big ass six bus from the south side. It would have been okay had Lollapalooza not been going on. Now, um, I'm not one to hate on anybody, badmouth somebody who doesn't do anything wrong to me, you know, stuff like that. But these Lala folks had to go. Um, this happens every year. This is my fourth year living in Chicago. You'd think I'd be, you know, used to it by now, but I'm not. A lot of the Lala folks were very obnoxious, you know, it's, it's a huge festival. Literally thousands and thousands of people are flocking to one of the most busiest areas of the entire city, blocking off traffic and it's atrocious, you know, like just an extra half hour to get anywhere past the south side, literally. You know how it is with festivals, the glitter and the lack of clothing and, you know, the way we wear our shoes, which I all love, just not when you're in my way. <laughs> that I'm broke and I was sick and I didn't want anything to do with it. I found myself hating a little bit, you know, like because it's like, dang, I want to be up in there. How come they get to have all the fun? How come X, Y, Z? How come they get to be in my way? And so I just had to be like, Brianna. Brianna, now you know if this was you, you would be having the time of your life. And so of course I said to myself, but self, that's not the point, they're in my way. I'm like, so you, thousands of people are just supposed to accommodate me? Like, no. <laughs> you know, granted I could have gone without all the touristy, looking up at the sky, stopping in the middle of the sidewalk, seeing used condoms on the ground, people peeing on the sidewalk. Half of that stuff already happens in Chicago and we don't need extra people to add to it. Um, I would rather not see that, but I mean, get your life, I guess, whatever. I would just prefer you stay out of my way when you do it. <laughs> I ended up going to my doctor's appointments, did what I had to do. I was going to go straight home, that was my plan. But then I remembered um, something I'd heard from one of the podcasts I listened to, it's called The Friend Zone. Um, one of the hosts, her name is Hey Friend, hey, I'll actually link that in the description below. Um, she does like the wellness portion of the podcast and she was talking about a technique called grounding. That's where you take off you know, your shoes, your socks, and you make physical contact with the earth, you know, be it dirt, grass, sand from the beach, and just sit there for like maybe 20 minutes to half hour just to regroup, and it really feels like it's almost a recharge. And it's science behind it too, because everybody has, you know, some form of electricity inside them. That's what it is when it comes to like our nerves firing, small bits of electricity. And the earth itself has its own magnetic pull put the two together connecting it it's like you're charging just like you're recharging your phone so I did that and I wrote at the same time and it was such a great experience to just be one with the earth and also be one with myself and I truly felt like it wasn't a fluke some people use these things and you know throw out different techniques and you never know what's going on but this time I really felt like I got something out of it so I cannot wait to go to the beach again and just stick my feet in the sand and just have a moment with myself so Saturday, my L was, uh, even though my body was better, my mind wasn't, um, I was disassociating like a motherfucker, okay? Like I, I was just all over the place. And I think I've discussed this a little bit, what disassociation is. It feels like your brain is detaching itself from your body. Like yourself, you know, your spirit is detaching itself from your body. I could 
walk a mile and have no sense that I'm doing it. I realize it's happening, but my brain isn't telling myself keep walking. You know, like we barely think about the things we do now, but we don't realize how much thinking or subconscious analyzing we do until that gets broken. You don't know it until it happens. It's a very scary thing sometimes. But that was going on all day and I knew I had to get it together somehow because my cousin's trunk party was gonna be in the afternoon. So I just did my absolute best, took my meds, you know, mellowed out, did what I needed to do, meditated, and then me and my brother went to my cousin Nate's um, uh, trunk party on the south side of Chicago where all my family stays. and. It was great guys it was so great it was so cute he got so many great things we wrote him little notes you know like to encourage him when he's having like a downtime at school or whatever he misses his family it was great just being around family and as soon as I got around them like I started to feel a lot better and then by the time I left I felt way way better so um, a lot of what happens with this association just body stuff in general has to do with connection like if I can connect to somebody else who I know fills my spirit and fills me in you know different ways and helps me feel fulfilled then the better off I'll be and then Sunday was even better um I took my brother to church that's my W I took him to church um my church I go to is City Point Community Church um in the south loop of Chicago it's a very small church it's um very community oriented uh it's very young and it just had its 11 year anniversary and so we got to be there for that spectacular event like it was just great you know like being around folks who are like-minded who want to welcome you into their community who would love for you to come back again and who would love for you to bring more folks to help celebrate each other and you know help praise God while you're doing it so I love that and he loved it my folks my folks as well have been there besides him and they love it too so it was great to see him enjoy people during fellowship uh, what wasn't so great is that I didn't get to go to the garden party afterwards. So um, my church had like um, like a garden event, like a little nice party theme thing at the beach after church to celebrate 11 years um, of doing God's work. And I wanted to go, but I had to write for my blog. I had to do laundry. I had to do a lot of things and I just couldn't make it. Even though it's literally across the street from me, the beach is right there and I couldn't go. I was so upset, but it's okay. Cause I still got to see people I hadn't seen in a while. Cause I hadn't been to church all summer. Cause I've been busy in out of town and not feeling well. Okay, have we gone through all the excuses? Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, it was great to see everybody. <laughs> so Monday, I worked from home. I woke up super late, not feeling well again. <laughs> Y'all, I feel like a broken record. Do you see, imagine, like I know it's annoying to probably hear this. Imagine going through it to just to always have something going on with you, just to be like, girl, again, are you kidding me? Are you serious? So. That's what ended up happening. I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm working from home. Um, so that's kind of an L and a W together, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, like, I didn't cause further damage to myself. And that is the most important part. Um, so L is I wasn't feeling well. W is that I took care of that and I handled my shit. And that's all that matters. Tuesday. Uh, it was a pretty sad day for me. Um, it started off okay woke up early my body woke me up early got to work early I was fine and then the news hit that um, Miss Toni Morrison has passed away she passed away uh, Monday night August 5th that night she was a Nobel Prize winner the first black woman to win one um, an incredible writer an incredible storyteller um, for black people for black women she was a lot of things to me uh, as a writer that that just hits me differently just because she was one of the first people to write something specifically for me and I knew it was for me you know uh, we grow up in school and we you know get introduced to the Edgar Allan Poe's and the the Hemingway's and, and all these great people who don't look like you they never look like you. And so you have to go out of your way to find people who do look like you. And she was introduced to me in undergrad um, and into grad school even. And so I feel so connected with her in many ways. And I had to get up from my desk and like go get myself together. Cause like I was teary eyed, like I, I was just heartbroken over it. What I did 
to combat this was I connected with her. Uh, my job is right off of the Chicago River. It's by the boardwalk, the river walk as they call it. I went down there, I took a cup of water with me, and knowing that she has now joined the ancestors, knowing that this now makes her the ancestors, I poured out some water for her as libations, as a sign of respect, as a blessing to her and her soul. And I spoke freely to her. And that's something that I haven't done in a while. Um, I made sure to also speak to my grandparents too. Right before I got to her, I spoke to my granny who passed away, rest her soul. And I spoke to my uh, papa who passed away, rest his soul. Um, poured some out for them as well. I wanted to just show respect to my ancestors and ask them to help her see safety as she journeys on home, if she's still journeying. None of us know what that looks like, you know, but we know that we are together once we leave this place here on earth. And I wanted to make sure that my folks saw that I was watching them as I watched her. I also talked to God. So of course I had to give him honor and respect, thank him for her time on earth, thank him for allowing me to live at the same time as she did, that is so dope. I just, I just truly loved her spirit, what she showed us. Imagine the things she didn't show us, the greatness. It was upsetting, but I got through it. So it was an L, but it's actually kind of not, because I had time with her, a substantial amount of time, and that's okay. My W though is that yesterday was Audrey and I's gotcha day, marks the three years that we've been together. She's a fighter, she's a trooper. We found each other at very difficult times in our lives, and I'm so glad that we did. I am, and I don't care what people say I'm a cat lady for it, I don't care. She literally is one of the sweetest animals I have ever met. And I love me some animals, you know? I'm gonna get a dog later on too. She gets along with dogs, so it's gonna be a nice, happy family. <laughs> I'm just glad she's a part of it. Which leads me to today, um, I honestly had no motivation to work. I work from home because it's Wednesday, so it's our weekly work from home day outside the days that I like stay home. But like, I just did not feel like it. Barely got anything done. I, I just don't have the motivation. But. I did get some good news, so maybe that's why. <laughs> I got some amazing news and I can't share it with y'all yet, but just know something is coming and it is big and it is so amazing and I am so blessed and so happy, so keep on look out for that. All right, now that I've caught you up with the week, I'll go ahead and rule this week. This week has been a W, definitely. Um, a lot of things happen, not in my favor, but they always turned around for the better for the most part. Now that we're caught up with my week, I'm gonna go ahead and go into the big L's and big W's of the week. I'm sure you guys could guess it. Um, the big L this week goes to the orange one. Now, um, he's been on my list for quite some time, but because I care about y'all, I wanted to spare your feelings and things, like not having to interact with this kind of stuff. So um, there have been like three mass shootings in the past seven days, in a seven day time frame. A week, if you will. The Garlic Fest on the West Coast, you had El Paso and you had Dayton. It's heartbreaking to watch the elderly and little kids literally get gunned down in broad daylight. There's freaking pandemonium going on earlier in Times Square because a motorcycle backfired and everyone thought it was gun gunshots and everyone's running around like it's crazy. Everyone's practically got PTSD. It's a lot going on. And in the midst of this, the very person who incited this violence, who is in the manifesto of all these freaking like supremacist weirdo creepy white dudes and stuff like that, young white men I might add, it's not the 60 year olds that we thought we were worried about, no it's these new age Nazis, okay? In the midst of all that, the president wants to blame video games for the violence? Video games, like, guys, so what's the difference between like the UK and like China and the US? Oh yeah. Our gun laws, idiots. Not you, I'm sorry babe. I didn't mean to call you an idiot. I'm not calling you an idiot. It's just, I'm angry right now. I'm sure, I'm sure you are on the right side of history. I'm sure you want safe legal gun reform. I'm sure you don't want to take guns away from everybody. I'm sure you want just people to be safe and to reduce all of these mass shootings and to save people's lives while also allowing people to have fun, you know, going hunting or shooting guns in your backyard, whatever the hell people do with guns. I'm, I'm sure, okay? 
But the problem is you're not the president. It just baffles me how the orange one deflects this way. I swear, if y'all don't go to the polls and vote like you got some damn sense, come November of next year, we gonna be talking about more than L's and W's on, on this here channel, okay? That's all I'm gonna, that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say, all I'm gonna say. He obviously gets the L. And while we're on the subject of orange ones, um, Honorable L goes to his daughter who wanted to deflect um, all of the gun violence by saying, well, don't forget about Chicago. Chicago's fine, boo. We're fine. We're fine, okay? We're as fine as we're gonna be in this country. We're working on it. You know you done messed up, girl. Like, quit while you're ahead. You should've quit before you even got to the White House, which you don't even have clearance to, but whatever, I'm, I'm a quit because I really go on a tangent here. So with all this negativity and stuff, that makes me even more happy to announce who got the big W of the week. The big W goes to Santoya Brown. Now, I don't know if you've heard of her, if not, Maybe plug in every now and again. These are very important issues, guys. <laughs> it's cool, I'm gonna explain it right now. Santoya Brown um, was a young lady who was sentenced to, I believe, 30 plus years in prison for killing a man when she was 16. Now, context here is super important. Not only did she kill a man, but she killed a man who was trying to harm her, trying to literally defile her body like she was forced literally forced into prostitution she literally did what she had to do to survive which was kill the person who was trying to attack her and yet she ended up in prison for 15 years was gonna be 30 because the court system doesn't rule in favor of black women let alone black girls you know black girls aren't allowed to be girls in this country they're seen as women she was seen as somebody who knew better, who, who could have done something else, who shouldn't have been in that situation, blah, 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 instead of the fact that this girl was literally fighting for her life and they put her away. And then Twitter does what it does best and got, you know, the Twitterverse into it. Black Twitter, might I add, because we're the ones who care about it. Ask yourself right now if you've seen anybody besides Black Twitter tweeting about this. No one on Facebook, Instagram. Okay then. It was black women who rallied around her, got lawyers together, got legislatures, you know, to pay attention, sign petitions. I was signing stuff. I was looking up stuff, tweeting stuff. So many people. And now she's free. They let her go after 15 years of served time. And all she could say to AJ Plus, I'll, I'll read this. What she said to them was she hopes to help other women and girls suffering abuse and exploitation. She just got out of prison. She could be just focusing on her life, trying to pick up where she left off, but instead she's like, I'm gonna help other people while I do that. That is so selfless. How could I not give her the W? This is an incredible example of what happens when black women get involved, okay? This is an incredible example of what happens when we protect each other, lift each other up, fight for each other, because oftentimes they're the only ones who are gonna do that. All I can say is good for you, girl. I'm so happy for you. I'm also gonna give, um, Toni Morrison, the W, my queen, you made it. Dearest ancestor, you made it out of this world. This world was not good enough for you, and yet you gave it so much. I appreciate and love you so much, which leads to my um, news segment, which is final thoughts. I just want to talk about um, Toni Morrison's impact on my life. Uh, like I said before, she was really the first person who told me as a black woman writer that I need to write, that it is imperative, that I have a responsibility to do that. One of her quotes says something along the lines of, if you see that your story isn't being portrayed, people who look like you aren't being talked about or told about, you don't see yourself anywhere in literature, you need to write these stories. And I didn't realize until that moment I had yesterday that I had been avoiding my own story. For those of you who don't know, I've been working on a novel for the past couple of years. Uh, grad school really helped with that. Getting my Master of Fine Arts in Creative Writing has truly helped with that process. Um, I even submitted part of my novel, the first half, for my thesis. It was about 150 some pages of work, and that's the first half. <laughs> At best, I am like three quarters of the way done now. Um, it's been two years, but that shows you just like how much of a gap of time it takes to do these things. and. All it takes is being discouraged one time, not feeling like writing one time, 
being annoyed with the story one time to just get out of the habit of writing the way you should, having discipline to do it, having the motivation to do it. And what her passing reminded me was motivation or not, you have a responsibility to not only your people, but to yourself. You have a responsibility. Your story is your own, but I promise you, you are not the only one going through what you're going through. Someone needs to know that they are seen. Someone needs to know that they're understood. Someone needs to know that someone cared about them enough to make a portrait of words and put it in 300 plus pages to tell you about yourself. What's going on in here through the eyes of someone else, through the lens of the author. I just wanted to pay my respects in the way I felt was appropriate and in a way that I believe she would appreciate. I got to be around for Toni Morrison before it was too late. You know, I got to see her live and watch her thrive and share and, and, and read and write and teach and do all these things. That was incredible. So above all, beyond sadness and grief is nothing but adoration and gratefulness in my heart. For her being obedient to God and letting him shine through her while she was here on this earth, protecting black people, telling our stories, and just being the light in the darkness and for God allowing her to be a vessel for that, for choosing her to do that and to have left us with something that we can have for the rest of our lives. That's so incredible. I just really wanted to share that with you guys. So with that, I'll just go ahead and wrap up here. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please, please, please like, share, and subscribe. Remember that I post a new blog post at carefreebreeblog.com every Sunday. And then I also follow it up with an L's and W's post on Wednesdays, just a paragraph. Um, and that connects us to this video for um, Carefree Brie on YouTube, where I post a new video every Thursday. Also feel free to follow me on the social medias somewhere on this page. I am on Twitter and I am on Instagram as well, so feel free to follow me on those platforms. And as always, if you would like to help me continue to grow this brand, continue doing what I love, talking to you guys through writing and through video, you can always donate to my PayPal or my Patreon. That should be somewhere on the screen right now. As well. No matter what, be sure to use the hashtag Carefree Brie whenever you tweet about, talk about, text about, comment about, do whatever when it comes to my brand. All right, guys, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and let you go. I am wishing you infinite freedom and perfect peace. This has been Carefree Brief. See you guys next week.